Hi, welcome back to Faces of Parkinson's. I'm your host, Robert Cochran, and today I'm joined by Samantha Ellendary. Samantha, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing really well, thank you. It's nice to be able to do this. I know we've been talking about it for a while. You are very busy. Tell people what you're busy with. Well, I am the founder of Parkinson Voice Project, and we are a nonprofit speech therapy clinic located in the Dallas Fort Worth area. So we specialize in treating people with Parkinson's, helping them to learn how to speak with intent. That's great. And, you know, what's particularly interesting to me about your program is the success of it. And I by no means mean to belittle anyone else who has smaller businesses at work. But you seem to be growing something that is turning into just a mass deal, including this year's grant, uh, which you can tell people more about. But uh, $650,000 in grant money you're giving out this year? We are. We um, have started replicating our program. So our, there is no other speech therapy clinic in the world that is just solely dedicated to treating people with Parkinson's. So we have, uh, in 2012, we started training speech language pathologists in our treatment protocol. And then this last holiday season, we received a gift of $650,000 by one of our Parkinson's patients to be used to train more uh, speech language pathologists and clinics throughout the United States. That's fantastic. Now, for somebody who doesn't understand this part of Parkinson's, why is the voice such an important thing and what does Parkins what does your program do to help? Yeah, it's it's so important. When we hear about Parkinson's, we think of a tremor or slow movements, but up to 90% of people with Parkinson's can struggle with communication. If left untreated, the voice can be so soft, can become so soft that the person is barely moving their lips and no sound is coming out. And the muscles we use for speaking are the muscles we use for swallowing. So if we don't get the speech under control, it could lead to some very serious swallowing issues. The main cause of death in people with Parkinson's is aspiration pneumonia, food, liquid, saliva going down the wrong way. But... The good thing is there is treatment available at Parkinson Voice Project. We know exactly how to help people to restore their speaking skills, get those, um, those muscles stronger, which protects their swallowing. So uh, we, we know how to do it. We just need to go out and, and teach other speech-language pathologists. You know, speech-language pathologists don't receive too much training in graduate school on Parkinson's. And um, it's uh, so they really just don't know how. They haven't had the experience and they, they don't know how to treat it. So uh, we're going to teach other so, professionals how to do what we're doing. That's great. And, and I have a, a, a actually a family member. She is a, a speech uh, pathologist. And um, I told her about your program. And she was very interested. Why is Parkinson's a unique part of this? Why, uh, instead of other therapies that are out there that have been used for Parkinson's, why is yours, uh, why did you decide to, to formally say this is a specific program for Parkinson's and what makes it work well for those with Parkinson's? I think uh, probably 20 years ago and before, I mean, if you were to look up in textbooks how to treat Parkinson's, how to treat the speech issues, it would say that speech therapy was not effective. We know a lot more about it, though, now. So we know that humans have two motor systems. We have the automatic system and the intentional system. I'm not using medical terms right now, but the automatic motor system requires dopamine. And by the time somebody with Parkinson's has developed any symptoms, they've already lost 60 to 80% of their dopamine. So since the automatic system requires dopamine, it doesn't work very well. But we have two motor systems. We have the intentional system that is not dependent on dopamine, and so it works very well. So we know that, so automatic behaviors, you know, we really take for granted everything that 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 we do automatically at least before parkinson's uh we you know we talking walking riding opening a car door getting out of a chair swinging our arms when we walk all of those things are automatic behaviors and without having enough dopamine those those uh, motor movements become challenging but the intentional motor system of people 
use intent. If they speak with intent, if they focus, concentrate, if they're deliberate, if they pretend like they're on an extremely important job interview, um, they can speak better, walk better, write better. I'm having to use a lot of intent right now just during this interview, you know, and, and that's what people with Parkinson's need to do. They need to learn how to activate the intentional motor system. Um, now, another problem besides the lack of dopamine is small movements. Parkinson's is characterized by smaller movements, smaller walking, smaller writing. When people smile, they don't, they don't use these muscles as much as other people. So when they, they think they're smiling, they may not be smiling, but mostly it's because of the smaller movements. And in terms of speaking, um, taking the air into our lungs, contracting the diaphragm in order to produce sound, those movements are smaller also. When somebody with Parkinson's keeps using these smaller movements, then they become weaker. It's important for people with Parkinson's to know that Parkinson's doesn't make people weak. They become weak because the movements are smaller and they're not using them to their full capacity. And so the purpose of speech therapy is twofold. One, to strengthen all of the muscles because they haven't been used. We need to strengthen all the muscles we use for speaking and swallowing, and then we need to teach the person how to activate the intentional motor system. And hopefully when they learn how to speak with intent, they start applying intent to everything that they're doing. Again, walking, riding, opening a door, pulling their wallet out of their pocket, cutting their meat, doing everything with intent, and we say uh, we encourage people to live with intent. Mm -hmm.